Villager trading is largely a question of time and emeralds. And while there are a few quirks uh, where you can get basically infinite uh, emeralds, like uh, with uh, this one here, um, this is an old librarian from 1.14, where this was still possible, you can get, you can sell books, one book, one emerald, and get three bookshelves for one emerald and of course one bookshelf uh, gets you uh, uh, three books back um, but this is also time consuming another option is uh, i think um, you can uh, uh, trade the uh, glass blocks convert them to paints and then the cartographer has six paints for one emerald which uh, nets you uh, uh, more emeralds than you used for the uh, for the glass there uh, there are also a few others uh, the most lucrative are with uh, uh, farming uh, something and then trade with farmers and uh, others. Uh, but in the end, it all comes down to the emeralds. And that's why today we will start on an emerald farm. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Otsus here and welcome back to another day in Minecraft, episode 61. And today we will tackle the emerald farm. And for that, we need a few things. Among the most important is a location where to build the farm. And uh, towards the north here, we have uh, an ice biome and uh, snowy plains, which also has uh, villager outposts and uh, uh, villages nearby, uh, which come in handy for part of the project. But today it's about the emerald farm or the uh, raid farm. Uh, we will get quite a few uh, items from that farm and uh, so let's head over there and start building. This spot here fits quite nicely. It's uh, somewhat flat, um, at least does not require too much landscaping. Then over there uh, we have a raid tower that we will need for the next farm to get bad omen. Then in that direction a bit further down is a village uh, from where we can get a villager for this raid farm. And this is this follows a tutorial by Chapman, link down in the description. And for the overall part, I basically follow uh, his design, however, with a different block palette. Uh, when it comes to the underground part, I think I will get a bit fancier, especially uh, when it comes to uh, sorting out the different items, like we did several times over already in the various farms. So uh, let's build the uh, overall part and then have a look what we can do downside. The farm design is actually inspired by the one from Chapman and uh, at least on the uh, overworld on the surface it's pretty similar. Just using different blocks but I think uh, when we go underground, we can be a bit uh, more fancy. So the outline here is an area of 15 by 15 blocks uh, with a three wide gap in the middle, which is the drop shaft. 
with a bit of lava on top so that uh, any ravages uh, get dealt with and then uh, there is also a hole where we can place the uh, villager in uh, so the raids are attracted to us and from here on we will dig down 27 blocks including this one and doing so we will also do the walls as we go down so i will see you at the bottom and here we are now down at the bottom uh, we have a cozy little hole and here in the drop shaft we will place some hoppers um, going under here and then we will need a <laughs> cat access um, we will need some slabs um, on top of them and then they will drop on here and we should not uh, stand too close so let's make sure this works out and in this direction um, i will dig out some space because in here we will have our sorting systems and actually i probably should figure out how many items uh, uh, we can have that drop from uh, from these uh, pillages or from a, from a raid. Uh, that would uh, indicate how many modules uh, we need for the sorting. And then probably um, a bit in this direction. Let's go quite a bit out here. And there's a cave somewhere. Then um, on here we can have uh, our drop shaft. And on here we would then have our elevator. So light everything up a bit, just to make sure there are no bad surprises. And I think this time I even sought to bring the uh, kelp with me. Yeah, very nice. Um, then Back here we can have fence gates that are open that would prevent the uh, water flow there. So, yep, uh, I think I will build up the uh, sorting system. It's the same thing uh, we already did a couple of times, so uh, no big surprises there. And then back there have uh, the uh, access and the uh, exit. And then this should almost be ready to run. We need the uh, villager uh, in there on top. And that might be um, quite a precarious operation. Uh, hopefully entertaining for you uh, so we will do that last and to finish this episode off uh, we will give this farm a spin to see if it works at all this chamber down here is now complete and uh, fully decorated 
I went with the smooth stone block because to me uh, that's like a bunker tile. So uh, this speaks to me like concrete. And it's funny that uh, the blocks in Minecraft that remind me most of concrete are andesite, polished variant, and this smooth stone. And not all the crazy colors of the uh, concrete. But then maybe that's more for uh, uh, working with colors. Then down there we have uh, exit and entry. Uh, here we have the uh, uh, killing chamber where we can whack everything that comes down, goes into this hopper line and then the sorter. Uh, the sorters are not yet set. I have prepared uh, I think seven of those with uh, uh, filters uh, but not yet the uh, items. And then we have uh, three uh, columns here for access stuff like uh, Totem of Undying, uh, water bottles uh, or potions that the uh, witches drop or maybe also crossbows. And everything else goes in here uh, and is destroyed by the lava down there and if you're wondering what all this uh, moaning and groaning is about just behind this wall there's a ravine and down there there's also a mine shaft uh, so I think we have to uh, put up with this uh, background noises from our neighbors but now let's go to the fun part and get ourselves a villager. And now to the fun part, moving a villager. The destination is over there and the village is just over that hill. And basically you have uh, two options, either you rail them with rail and minecart or you boat them and both have their disadvantages. But I think I will go with boating because uh, it's just easier to get a village into a boat than into a minecart and for that I will uh, build uh, basically a dirt road um, that's at the top here of this rise so we can get over everything that is in our way and then at the, at the village side uh, I just have to uh, lift the boat up high enough but we will come to that hello good sir one moment please could I possibly interest you in a boat ride? Yes, very nice. And let's head over here where I have prepared a ramp. And up there is the auto part. So let's move to this last bit here yep that should work and then underneath here I have this contraption uh, with a piston that I can use to lift the boat up like that and it's Repeat until a boat is all the way on top. Uh, 
And of course the redstone block drops always out of my hand or most of the time. That's how it is. And we don't need the blocks anymore. Well, it looks I misjudged the distance there a bit, but no metal, which is have to gain the height here. Um, hopefully without reaching push limit, otherwise we would have to move the piston up and do the same thing all over again. And yes, I know. Um, okay, we are at push limit. And I know it's probably better, maybe it's enough. It's probably better uh, to have a lever than a redstone block, but uh, I would have needed to craft a lever. Oh, very nice. We are up high enough. So hello there. And let's make this turn here and then speed our way over ever so slowly to our farm. Uh, keep a watch on the sun so we are not caught in the dark. That might be po um, dangerous. We want to take good care of our villager here until we have him in the hole that's intended for him. All right, we are here with our villager took half a Minecraft day, but uh, we made it. So let's dump him into this hole that we prepared for him. Um, it's moving to that side. And then um, let's have a bed here. And we can break the boat. Um, do you want by any chance have a workstation? Do I have one to spare in here? Nope. And it was the other one. Yep. So you don't get bored uh, uh, in here. And we can make our way out. Right. And then. Ah, you like your new placing. Um, yeah. That's very fine. Um, we will cover you with uh, glass, so. And then, um, I need a bit more slabs. Because we have to. Ooh, there are some blocks missing. Um, let's slap everything up here and um, then we probably also have to make sure that 
they can step up from the uh, outside. Um, so let's do that real quick. And of that, I think uh, we also need to uh, place the water here on the uh, inside. Uh, so everything is pushed towards the middle. Uh, where they can fall down. Um, yeah, I think 24 is not enough, but I should have a few more stone blocks laying around somewhere. And one, yeah, not enough. Uh, don't you worry. Apparently not in here. And not in here, really. I'm short of a few stone slabs. Now that all the uh, slabs are uh, uh, placed, or oh, almost all the slabs are placed here, um, we are almost done here. What we need to do is place the water, um, but this being a snowy biome, the water uh, can freeze. So to avoid that, um, we will uh, create ourselves a bit of a roof cover. Is this high enough? Probably not. I think uh, ravages are three high. So let's roof this up with glass so the water below does not freeze. And I would guess I don't have uh, enough glass on me. Typical. Um, but what can you do? We will finish this off anyway. We can spare a bit of glass uh, uh, by not doing the uh, outermost row, which is uh, stone anyway. That was one stack already, and we did not even uh, make a complete round here. So, need more glass here, and this should go over the top of our contraption in the middle. So, let me finish off this uh, this glass roof and then we can move on with the water placement. Glass roof is all in place so now we can try to figure that out how this goes with the water. We have an infinite water source over here and we need to place water along the uh, along side. Flowing towards the middle. Then over here. Yeah. 
in this middle spot. Take it from there. Also here. And we have the uh, other side. And the last one. Oh. Be a bit careful to grab the right one. And that should push everything towards the metal. Now that I also have removed the uh, grass lane over here, it's time to give this bad boy a test. And for that we actually need bad omen, which we hopefully can get over here by killing one of the guys with a banner. Hopefully any of those is around. Don't care for the rest. Ah, yeah, there is one. Right. And then we go to our farm. We have the bad omen right there. And the raid starts, so let's hop on down. And then we wait for the uh, various raids of the farm. Maybe it would be good to have a bell over here or somewhere so we can uh, uh, gather what's going on from down here. But for now we will do this way. And it takes uh, a while until the, uh, the raid party found their way uh, here. And very nice, that was a uh, first batch, a very nice first batch, and there comes in the uh, second raid. Usually in the, in the first uh, raid you don't have many uh, Johnnies, those are the guys with the axe. Uh, they're called that way because of uh, the movie Shining where Jack Nicholson terrorizes his family with an ex. And his name is Johnny. Or no, his name is not Johnny, but when he breaks down the door with his ex, he calls Johnny. That's where it comes from. Oh, there was a zombie in the mix. And the Johnnies actually they drop uh, uh, emeralds. The other guys, those are the ones with the crossbow. They may may drop emeralds uh, and um, crossbows. Um, I'm not too much interested in those drops. And that's, I think, the fourth round. So let's wait until they find their way to the middle as well. Pow. 
Well, yep. Uh, I think this raid also has a has a witch. Yep. And witches are very nice because they have great they have a great variety of uh, of drops like uh, redstone, glowstone, uh, glass bottles, uh, potions, sugar, six. And we are already in the next raid. And it's waiting time again until they find their way to us. <coughs> and as you've seen, their banner dropped and uh, basically uh, killing one of the banner guys uh, initiates the next uh, round of raid uh, once all the uh, raid members are killed uh, until the last raid when you get the uh, the hero of the village effect if you're close to the village and that basically negates the bad omen effect from your last kill. Um, uh, with the result that there is no follow-up rate. And this is maybe the downside of uh, this design. Because after you have run through the whole sequence, you have to get yourself a new bad omen. And there are uh, other designs where you basically um, have your killing chamber not within reach of the village, which is above there with our villager, and um, thereby um, you could uh, create something where you uh, uh, move yourself uh, uh, from the killing location to the village location and thereby uh, creating a loop and another downside uh, from this is uh, sometimes um, the raid party does not find the way to the center here, which means we are stuck with an incomplete raid. And the incomplete raid will go away after um, 40 minutes. But you still have the raid parties that linger on in the vicinity. So this can happen if they wander off. Did not see them anywhere. But you get the gist how this farm works and uh, also what the uh, what the drawbacks are 
So um, I would say um, let's end this episode here. And uh, I will see you in another one pretty soon. Goodbye.